7 p.m. Regular council meeting, Monday, October the 6th, 2014, 7 p.m. We'll now come to order. Roll call, please. Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Zambach. Present. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. Craybacher. Here. Mr. Mike Lowry. Here. All present. Thank you. Uh, just to remind everyone, if you have a cell phone, would you please turn it on vibrate or turn it off, please, so it doesn't interrupt the meeting. And we're now going to have the invocation by Pastor Jeff Birdsall from the First United Methodist Church. First of all, what a wonderful weekend we had. It was just terrific to be in community together. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this past weekend time to be able to have fun with friends, neighbors, and family, a time for us to be able to celebrate our community together, the harmony with which we live. We know that that comes from your love, O oh God, because we know other places where that harmony does not exist, because your love is not there. We see the discord, we see the violence, and Lord, we give you thanks that we can live this way together. We also know that it's uh, hard work to live together in community. We have to live listening to one another and working with one another and caring about one another. And we come together to do that tonight. We ask you that we do it well, that the decisions we make will be uh, in your accord and with your goodwill. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you'll join me for the pledge, we'll need your flag in the back, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> I'd like to say also thank you all for being here this evening. Uh, it's nice to see some fresh faces. That's good. Thank you for being here. Action on the minutes, regular meeting, September 15, 2014. So moved. <laughs> Sorry. Dick has a second. Dick has a second. Who had the motion? I heard about four people. <laughs> <laughs> Just a Craig Walker tried to beat everyone to the punch. He had it. Sandbox had the second. Yes, sir. It's All like right. Gregory. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybock. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Passed seven to zero. Thank you, sir. We're now at communications. Are there any communications? None to tonight. Thank you. So we're now going to the city manager's report, please. Okay. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, I'd like to start out under the action report um, regarding the demolition funding question that had come up, I believe, during the joint government meeting. And um, I put in your packet a copy of an email from David Fleck, who was with the Clark County Community Development. He is helping with the uh, land uh, bank uh, questions. Basically, um, the First, the first thing was that they don't have enough money in the bank at this point that if they were able to do it, that they'd be able to loan us that much to do the school. There's a possibility if somebody was going to buy it, demolish it, and repurpose the area, that they might qualify for a loan, partial loan, but it would be a low $20,000, $30,000 probably at the most at this point. They just don't have the funds to be able to give it all out on one project. Um, David did say, though, that he would keep his eye out to see if there's any other type of grants. The moving Ohio forward, that was all residential. That was not for commercial use at all. So um, he said he'd keep his eyes out for us and see what he could do. But um, we were led to believe that we might be able to use the land bank for that. But that's not, that's not going to work out. Um, Going Excuse on. Me, I'm sorry, we mm -hmm. have a question. We have a question. I don't mean to cut you off, Ms. No. Jones. I know that there was a community organization that was interested in the property, taking the school and revamping it for sort of a community center. Are they still interested, or is that? Um, out of the three that I've heard from, I believe one may still be interested. 
Do we still um, have dialogue with them? Um, I haven't heard from them in a couple weeks, no. Okay. Um, the one lady that had gone through actually with her architect, we had met with her several times. Mr. Um, Bridge and I sat down with her trying to make sure she realized what was involved because I think that she didn't really get the conception of how much work it was going to be and she thought that she could do it and her people that work for her could do it and her architect pretty much told her this is going to be a couple million dollars. I think she believed him whereas she you know, she, I don't know if she didn't believe us or she still thought they could do it. I haven't heard back since she went through the building. Um, so I'm hopeful that the one that was talking about tearing it down and building houses is still interested. She was doing research as far as her funding and things like that. So, you know, I wanted to give her some time to, to get all her ducks in a row, but I will talk, talk to her and, and see if she wants to move forward. Um, I'm almost to the point that I was thinking we should have like a drawing and um, give it away for free if you tear it down and just draw a name and yeah, you win. You get to tear down the building. If that's winning. Huh? Yeah. That's winning. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, we'll get there. That is still one of my main goals is to get that building down. Thank you. I know you've been working hard on this yeah. thing. I think we have another question yeah. from Mr. You hit on something. Uh, Kim, we talked earlier, all of us. Uh, right now, it's for sale. And, um, it's up for whoever, whatever someone wants to bid. Right. Why not? We spoke about this before. Why not put it for free with the restrictions? Advertise it for free. Well, that I, would be I, up to council. I think we voted on that one time. Yeah. Before, so I know you had said a dollar, and, and I've made that really clear when people ask. Oh, it's yeah. like, yeah, I've made okay. it very clear that okay. we would take pretty much anything that they offered. That's okay. pretty close to free. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Nobody's offered free yet. <laughs> yes, but we're willing to listen. <laughs> and add, add a little bit more to this. I have, I have talked to a couple of people that, that are pay. builders and developers, uh -huh. and they really think that the only way that they could make out on that property to buy it and tear that down would be to do like maybe double condominiums or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. To be able to fit on that land because single family houses probably would not bring enough money for them to be able to recoup what they're going to have in the houses. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you might want to put out there. That's something the council should know also. The zoning that would have to be changed. Right. Exactly. But I'm just saying mm -hmm. developers that maybe somebody would be interested at that point mm -hmm. if they could buy the property for carrying it down. Mm -hmm. That's a possibility. You never mm -hmm. know. Just threw that out. Awesome. Any, any other questions? Anyone on that? No. As, as yes. bad as I would like to see the building go, I don't think that we should even consider coming. We went through this when we rezoned it, spoke to everybody, heard what they had to say, and I would not be a part of it. Okay. I would never be a part of coming in. could not work that. Okay, then, continuing uh, with the service discussion, Mr. Kitko had a couple updates for us. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. Uh, just a couple quick items. I just want to let everybody know, uh, besides this week uh, for limb and brush pickup, our final collection for the season will be November. So you will call in in the first week of November and we will pick up on that uh, first Monday or Tuesday of the second week of November. So final limb and brush pickup is um, the second Monday or the first or second week of November. Second week? Yep, second week. Be, they don't have to call, right? Just no, they they have, yeah, they have to call in the first week. Yep. Okay. Uh, next item I have is it's a, that time of year for leaf pickup and disposal. Uh, the leaf pickup season will start the week of October 20th, which will be the northwest section, which is the Willowick area. That will go on for one week. Uh, then the week of the 20, October 27th will be the Northwoods section, and then the um, the week of November 3rd will be the um, uh, Zimmerman Edgebrook area and then the week of November 10th will be the uh, old section of town and then we'll repeat for a second round of pickups. Outside of that we do allow um, leaves to be dropped off behind the old what is uh, 600 West Madison Street, the old school that we were just talking about. Um, leaves only and we will allow them to be dropped off up until December 21st. Uh, during the collection, uh, we need to rake all the leaves into the street 
approximately a foot to two feet away from the curb so we get rain well it'll still allow the water to flow uh, no foreign materials such as rocks brush branches or garden materials uh, you know we do have a new relief machine so uh, it does a great job but it will get damaged easy with any kind of bricks or anything like that avoid parking on the street during your collection week um, do not park your cars on dry leaves as if they're running it may cause fires and uh, you may place your leaves on the street one week prior to your scheduled pickup date for your area. Um, this flyer uh, the, has a map on the back with your section. Is it the city building? It is on our website. Um, and then it will be displayed on the video here for the council meeting. And then my last item is um, the, we've been just a little bit behind on our meter upgrade project, but that we are expecting delivery this week. Letters should be going out to residents um, in the city from Neptune uh, on Neptune slash city letterhead. Um, uh, recent one calls back to schedule those appointments. So they probably will be starting within the next week or two. We're supposed to receive a big shipment this week. And that is all I have. I can entertain questions on those or any other topics. Anyone have a question for Mr. Kinda? Yes, Mr. Allen. How, just the other day, Notice that some of the light poles paint is peeling off. Is there any plans to fix them or we can paint them with something? Because if they keep going, they're going to look very, very shabby. Uh, you know, they're beautiful poles, they cost a lot of money. I've realized grant paid for part of it, but we pay for them all too. Is there any way to protect them, take care of them, and make them look? Take them back the way they should be. Yeah, we've already discussed uh, trying to figure out because that is a powder coating, mm -hmm. and I'm working with uh, a company to see if there's someone that can do a separate powder coating because it's a cast aluminum, right. and so with, and, and, and as you notice, this paint is peeling at the section where the two pieces were put together, right. put together, and it's oxidizing. So yeah, we're currently trying to figure out how to get the. We'll be, we can cover it up with some black paint, right. but the paint won't stay. So we're trying to get a. Uh, on-site powder coating fix for Is there any kind of warranty that might be involved there? Um, usually there's 90 days, and I would guess a, a year at max, and okay. they've all been up for a while. Okay. But, if, but everyone is aware of it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Just an update on the sign for Smith Park. On, are we going to be able to get anything completed on that painted I'm talking about? Um, I had talked with Ms. Jones and right now we got some prices I think she shared them with you and some ideas right now I'm right we're looking at probably springtime to maybe do something but we're not sure at this time I, I talk, showed you the quotes it was anywhere from fifteen hundred to over three thousand dollars the three thousand dollars would include gold leaf which is what is on there now which we've already said we're not going to do that right. but still fifteen hundred dollars to paint it is a lot of money so we're just everything is on hold with our budget right now okay. we don't have an organization that could possibly do it but we check with churches i have i have a family member or it's someone close to him that we have his name and number mm -hmm. um that christy had given me from the sign company and we're, we're going to get in contact with him and see, you know, he said he would help. Okay. So I just, we're just not sure of that amount. Maybe yet. someone, you know, that could donate their time because that's, of course, where most of it would come from, the price. And we could provide the paint possibly or something like that. I, just a suggestion. That's what I'm, it's looking pretty shabby. That's what I'm getting. Well, a couple of day council meeting. Yeah. No, I mean, we can work on it. I'm going to take it. I'll do it, too. I think we can do it. We have another sign down by IGA as you come out, the one where they pulled the big bushes out that needs work on also. That would be a good council project right here. Absolutely. Put that one up. And I've already got some soil we can put in there and possibly throw some flowers in there that will come up next year. And so there's another project, something we can do to help beautify things. Anyway, I'm sorry, we're regressing here. I could ask um, Sciencemen to give me a price on the lettering portion, the, the wreath and the portrait part, mm -hmm. which is vinyl lettering on that metal, and see, I know it's rusting a little bit, but I can see what they can do to just to take care of that part if you guys are looking to take care of the painting of the wood part. Here's the cost on the painting. Um, paint would probably only be a couple gallons. I think their time is spent actually more of that stenciling. Right. 
uh, part is a lot of their, their cost. The rest is the, um, yeah, it's just paint and cedar. Uh, the paint's not that expensive. And the, main, the big thing they said was stay away from what's on there now is the burgundy. Um, burgundy, for some reason, fades quicker in the sun than a lot of other colors. So they said if you can change the color a little bit, go ahead and do that, and you'll get a little more longevity from the paint. I found that out in Hensley Park also. That was, that was one of my projects. I was going to try and touch that up. Sign up above as well as a big sign welcome to the and It's burning as you're talking about. And I thought the festival was over. Do you hear all this? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Is that all you had, Mr. Kiko? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, in your packet was a copy of a letter I sent to the Heritage of Light Committee. Um, they had taken it upon themselves to replace lighting for us at Hensley Park and we greatly appreciated that. Um, that will make the new fixtures make the park look even better at night when you're driving through. And I felt like it was going to um, make people want to stop and, and look at the area. So um, I, I really appreciate them taking the time to do that. And while we're talking of the Heritage Collide, I was going to do it a little later, but I can't say enough about the committee, all the work you all did. It was so, it was so heartfelt and it was it was so neat to see so many people in the town at the same time and everybody was enjoying themselves and it was just such a sense of community that I, I do appreciate. I know you guys give up a lot of your own time and, and it was very much appreciated, all the hard work. Um, and then I wanted to thank the people that went to the, the festival and the parade as well because there was a lot of people along the sidewalks and, and that that meant a lot too, so we appreciate that. Uh, the last thing I had in um, your packets was a copy of a letter regarding the Clark County ele um, Electric Aggregation Program. I just wanted to let everybody know you should be getting a letter if you haven't already gotten it. Um, if you have any questions regarding this, I would direct you to call the Bethel Township office. They are the ones that did the spearheading of this project. Um, their number is 849-9499. But basically what I want you to know is that you only have to return this letter if you're going to opt out of the program. If you don't send back the letter, you will automatically be enrolled in the program. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And that does have to be mailed by, back by October the 20th. So um, if you did not want to stay with the program, make sure that you do mail the, the paperwork back by the 20th. I have a question on that. I've not received one at this point that I that I know. Has anyone on council? No, today. I have not. Just, just got them. I've not received. We one. got these at the city building. Uh, maybe they're dated September 29th, so it was last week sometime. Um, and it is the way I didn't read it in detail, but it looks like it's just addressing Dayton Power and Light. So if people in the city have Ohio Edison. I don't know if you get a different letter that says Ohio Edison or if this is just going to be pertaining to the DPNL. Ours did talk about Ohio Edison. Oh, it did? Okay, okay. So then they, they must be specific. The letter is specific you might let to the address. people know also about the level of billing. It's not something that you can get. Okay. Um, that's what that's they the told point. us at the joint government meeting. That was one of the goals was to get level billing. And uh, the way I understand what they told us at the joint government meeting, that that they are not going to be able to offer level billing. But again, I would suggest if you have any other questions about it, we don't have all the details here in the city since we weren't involved with the, um, actually developing the program. So I would call Bethel Township and, and, and I'm sure they'll be glad to help you and answer any of your questions. That was all I had, if anybody else has anything. Anyone have any questions? Comments? Audience? Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, comments from the members of the public. We're at that opportunity now. Anyone out there? Yes, sir. If you go to the podium and introduce yourself. John Schweitzer, 108 Galewood. My problem is a higher revised code. 4513.22, mufflers. Every motor vehicle and motorcycle with an internal combustion engine shall at all times be equipped with a muffler, which is in good working order and in constant operation to prevent excessive or unusual 
noise. Every motorcycle muffler shall be equipped with baffles and plates. There has been a car in New Carlisle for a year with no muffler. I've taken the license number to the police department who said, oh yeah, that's so-and-so that lives up on Scott by the church. That was last summer, not this summer. You've got signs up on the highway about engine brakes, which is motor noise. There are people, uh, particularly motorcycles. I live at the intersection of Galewood and Scott, which used to be a four-way stop. There's no longer, they took the stop signs down. So the people turn off Main Street, accelerate to the floor, they're going 60 mile an hour by the time they go past my house, and half of them got these little megaphone mufflers on that just rattle the glass and drive people crazy. Now it's the law that people have to have mufflers to prevent excessive or unusual noise. And it's just simply not being taken care of or even looked at. And some people say, well, you have to have a meter to know what noise is. Mm -hmm. I don't have to know, have a meter to know what noise is. If it's excessive or unusual, it's illegal. And I'd like to get something done about it. If it, I, I'd actually like to get the four-way stop put back in front of my house to cut the speed limit down to 35 instead of 65. Even the police turn off Maine. And I can hear that accelerator just and here they come. And they're going 50, 60 mile an hour past my house. Now, most of the time they got lights on, some of the time they don't. And then here comes two or three more. And they zing around. It's just, it's dangerous. And John, city manager, I'm sure will address that and talk to Sergeant number one and see what can be done on that. I, I'm with you. Someone should not, first off, the speeding is the worst thing, even more so than the other. Yeah. That's something we need to address. And if they don't have mufflers on, no. they tend to accelerate real hard yes. coming around the corner. I, I understand you're frustrated. And, and uh, I think we all are. I've, I've heard mufflers going by my place as well. So. I've heard them going clear through town. Right. And if it's the fact that the police have the windows rolled up and the air conditioning on and they can't hear it, something needs to be done about it. We will address it and talk with our sergeant and see what Thank we can you. do. Appreciate it. Try and write some tickets on that. Thank you. Appreciate you coming. Anyone else on the audience? Anyone else like to speak tonight? All right. Thank you so much for being here again. Uh, committee reports. Any committee reports? None tonight. tonight. Right. Resolutions, I see we have none. So we'll go into the ordinances, if you would, please. Ordinance 14-45, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a renewal intergovernmental agreement with the Board of Clark County Commissioners regarding wastewater services. Two minutes. Yes, sir. The motion goes off. 14 days, 45. Second. Okay, as an explanation of this ordinance, um, originally this agreement was drawn up in 1994. It was for 20 years. And this is for sanitary sewer system extension north. Mostly it's around the Country Squire area, Honey Creek area. Um, and Basically, this is just a renewal um, for another 20 years, uh, saying that the city will, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Kitko, but we'll maintain it because there are lines. Is that correct or not? Um, part of it, because we supply uh, sewer collections in the county area, that we just need an agreement saying that we'll continue this throughout. The only reason, is, the only way this agreement will go away is if they would ever become in the city, then that agreement will go away. But that this handles a lot of the north section, Coal Ridge, uh, the, it's a large area. Any questions, anyone? Audience, any questions? You go ahead and call for the vote, please. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybach? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. 
Ordinance 14 46, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action on 10 2014. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a sewer easement agreement with CBS 3457 Ohio LCC. Ordinance 14 47E, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the Board of Clark County Commissioners and Job and Family Services of Clark County regarding the Work Experience Program, WEP, and declaring an emergency. Mr. Council. Mayor, yes. move to adopt ordinance 14-47E. Second. And as an explanation of this ordinance, this actually took effect October 1st is why it needs to be an emergency. Um, we just received it in the mail last week. Um, this is an agreement, as it says, with the county commissioners and job and family services. Uh, we are one of the uh, providers of places for people to work as part of this WEP program. Um, they, a lot of the different programs, they actually have to do um, work at a work site as part of the reason they get their benefits. So um, we provide the workplace for them to come. And it's greatly, I mean, it helps both them and it helps us because it gives us hands for a lot of our projects. So um, we like being a part of this program. Okay, any questions? Yes. Uh, two questions. One is how many people do you usually get? I would say one or two a month at the most. Or? It can be sporadic. They usually come in 80 hours a month, 100 hours a month. It's just, it's it's very sporadic. It's, you know, I guess it would really depend the job market on how things are looking. Okay. Second question is, I noticed in the agreement here that it says uh, to understand that they're not, they're not employees and they're not, they don't have privileges of any of their Right. They don't get paid. They don't have holiday pay or you know sick leave or anything like that. They just come in and do their six hours a day or their three hours a day or whatever they are required to do. Are these welfare participants? That's you know that that's similar. Is that Isn't that similar? It, it's, it's some. It's very close to that. They, they have a lot of different programs. <laughs> right, right, and they're also covered under the liability insurance of them, not the us. Yeah. Anyone else? Any other questions? Mr. Collier, you're talking to me. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybock? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Pass 7 to 0. Ordinance 14 48, introduction, public hearing, and action on 10 2014. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of rock salt. So we have there. Thank you. Appreciate that. Other business? Anyone have other business? Mr. Pray Walker first, please. Yeah, I just got one thing, and, and I've been poking in on the uh, Springfield Council on Channel 5, mm -hmm. I think, and, and every time I do it, it seems like got the same thing, so I'm much going to do it, I don't know. But the, what they're talking about is their website mm -hmm. and how important their website and how they're trying to revamp their image mm -hmm. and uh, through business, you know, and, and and they said they were saying that how business looks at the websites first when they're looking for places. So I, I don't know if this is the website they're talking about. I don't know. Have you seen Springfield? Springfield? I haven't seen it recently. Okay. Uh, have you? It's pretty nice. I kind of poked around a little bit on it. And what kind of attracted me to it, a um, couple things, is that one, you can get road conditions, you know, what's happening on the streets. You know, repair, what's, repair, yeah. what's repair, mm -hmm. what's coming up, mm -hmm. you know, due dates, you know, mm -hmm. when are they going to work on it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Another thing is, um, I know this was brought up, I think Bill McIntyre brought it up, <coughs> about paying your utility bills, uh, you know, and I'm um, hoping you're still working on that somehow. You know, they can pay that through the website, you know. Um, but anyway, then it has different, you know, different good things like you could put heritage to flight or anything. Mm -hmm. Anyway. That's what I want to bring up is just, you know, when people are looking for places to live or anything, they're going to the websites first. And I hope that's our websites being okay. 
and at the, can I keep that? Yeah, that it can be worked on. They, and I just talked to Mr. Hanrahan um, a couple days ago about our website, telling him that as soon as we know more about our budget, we will be talking to him again. He is working at our speed. And as we get the money, he's doing what we're requesting him to do. But like I said before, our budget is on hold right now with everything like that. We're not, we're not, we can't. <laughs> Even as much as we want to, we've got, you know, a little bit done on it. Right. Mr. Craig Rocker, thank you for bringing that to all of our attention. We appreciate it. Mr. Lowry, would you like to say something about the uh, festival this week? Yes, I do. I just wanted to. First off, thanks uh, the city, the city workers, Howie, uh, the New Colorado, or the uh, Clark County Sheriff's Department, the Fire Department, for all the help they gave us over the weekend. It was we couldn't have pulled off without the city workers, especially they they got that stage up and it looked beautiful. So uh, thank you, Howie. And I'll crew. pass that on to the guys. Please do. Uh, and thanks to the citizens that made it out. It was a tough and chilly weekend, but it you know for for what we had to work with with the weather, it it turned out pretty good. The fireworks, I think, was uh, probably one of the favorite things that everybody was surprised with. I was surprised. I mean, I was one that, that uh, dealt with the company and I didn't expect to get that for what we paid. So it was, it was a nice touch. So thanks to everybody that made it out and supported the festival. I would like to add to that. I think the uh, Queen and Princess uh, of the festival worked out very well this last time. It was a little slow, but we will improve on that. We have actually four different or new committee members that are taking care of that portion of it. That's what we're really looking for. We're looking for other entities to take different parts of this festival so we don't have to do basically everything. And we've had that happen. The chair race was probably a very successful chair race this time. There was a lot of people watching that. Uh, Mike was one of the victors in one of the categories, and <laughs> Mandy Warby. I've uh, got a whip in my leg. Yes, yeah, so you can't walk without another magazine. He tried to get me to do it. I said, I can make about four feet and probably pull a muscle, but I think I'll pass. <laughs> but uh, there's so many different aspects of that festival that it would be great if other organizations would like to get involved to help us out with it. Uh, what I was going to say on the chair race, New Cloud Rotary has taken that over, which is a big help to us to be able to do that. So there are different aspects of it, and if you have an organization that would like to get involved, we would love to talk to you, believe me. So please let us know, and we'd be happy to talk with you on it, see what we can come up with. And I think you have something to say at this point. I did. I, I wanted to talk for a bit, if I could, about the um, issue coming up involving the, um, the vote on the tax. There is a, there's a levy coming up here on the ballot in November. I, you know, I know we've talked about it in great detail. I hope you don't mind if I talk about it for a bit. It's, it's really important to me. We, you, you know we've been in a, in a big recession. It's been going on for about seven, eight years now. Um, all small communities, everyone's receiving less money from the state and federal government than they were before. <coughs> the result in this is that we've had to be more creative in how we raise money and also, uh, unfortunately, also have to cut back on a lot of services that people enjoy. We know we've have been having a lot of problems with um, funding of roads and streets and. And recently we had a deputy that's been here for a number of years who knew this community, who knew it well, who knew the problem areas, who knew our citizens. And he had to resign his post um, as, a, as a sheriff's deputy for our community to go back working a desk job with the, with the jail. The reason for that is he had a nagging back injury and we didn't have a newer car for him. He had to use an older vehicle which aggravated this injury and he couldn't physically do the job and so we lost him. And so when we look at this issue coming up to to increase um, what we have for the income tax and we'd still be in line if not lower than the majority of communities in the area where there would be Huber Heights uh, just to the to the west of us or Springfield to the east we're looking at keeping our city viable uh, Mr. Kraybach I'm really glad you brought up that issue with online bill payment this is something that uh, Ms. Jones and I and Michael have been looking at for some time uh, there's been a lot of security breaches at Target and other places, and we want to make sure we go with the right company so that your data is protected. Well, that comes with a cost. And we looked at the numbers, and we just can't afford it. It would be convenient, it would be great, but we can't afford it right now. Um, coming down to, to paving the streets and making sure the streets are safe, we're just barely getting by with doing that. And, and this isn't something that we want to have pass as a luxury. It's something that we need. Because right now your cars are getting damaged because of the bad roads and we're losing good deputies because of, because of the bad roads. 
um, and it's it's we want to we want to keep New Carlisle going. We want us to be able to get over this hump um, from where we were at years ago and keep moving forward. And that's why I'm a very strong proponent of this issue. And I hope that you'll seriously consider voting yes in November. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Any? Yes. Sir. I wanted to say thank you, Mike, and to the committee for a great heritage of flight. You guys deserve a round of applause. I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, the fireworks are great. I went to IGA and people were like, oh, yeah, did you see the fireworks? So I think that was a good touch. One guy told me, uh, and I quote, it was better than 4th of July. So I just thought I would give you the heads up about that. So. Thank you. Anyone else? Council, anyone else like to say anything? Okay, Mr. Collier, if you'd go ahead and read uh, A, B, C, and D, please. City offices will be closed on Tuesday, November the 11th for Veterans Day. Uh, the next joint government meeting will be Monday, January 26, 2015 at 6.30 p.m. and that will be at the Bethel Township Firehouse. The New Carlisle Crime Watch meeting will be this Wednesday, October the, the 8th. Is that correct, Carol? Okay. At 6.30 here at the Smith Park Shelter House. And please put on your calendar election day, Tuesday, November the 4th, 2014. There will be a city income tax issue on the ballot. And I understand you can still register up until 9 o'clock tonight. Yeah. By the time they see that on the TV, it'll be too late, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's all I have. Thank you. Anyone from the audience have an event before we go to forum? Yes, sir. Who operates the tornado? Uh, the uh, city manager can say that for you. Could I suggest that you don't test it in bad weather? <laughs> <laughs> well, when it went off this morning, I don't think, was it storming this morning? Well, this is me. Oh, it yeah. Wasn't, wasn't I heard it yeah. It's supposed to be the first Monday of the month, so. Months ago, it was bad weather. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. I know. I know. And sometimes they do it late. So we're, we're really working with them to make it to be a set time so people know when they hear it that that is the scheduled time. It's not supposed to be for longer than like 30 seconds and we've had to go over that with them again because they were letting it go for three minutes and we're like, that sounds like it's a real alarm when you're letting it go that long. So I appreciate your, uh, we agree. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyone else in the audience? Again, thank you all for being here tonight. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, now we have an executive session tonight to discuss personnel, employment, and council business. And there is no additional council business uh, anticipated after the executive session. So just to let everyone know, but I have a motion to go into executive session. So move. Mr. Lowe, we have a second. Please. Mr. Was that Mr. Zambach? Uh, Mr. Zambach. <clears throat> Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. We're going to go into the executive session. We're going to take a five minute break. We need to have a facility clear if you would please. 